Hey there, Sharon Ornelser. Welcome to today, 1,873 of What You Have to Know, documenting the journey as I originally in 2018 transitioned from the corporate brick and mortar businesses world to the online world. Following my divorce, I had an opportunity, actually 2017 I came online. It wasn't until 2018 when I started doing videos and creating different types of content. I was doing some things, trying out different things that I had learned online, going down different paths, most of which were an epic failure in that they didn't achieve the results I wanted at the time, but they were stepping stones and they did teach me what isn't isn't for me, what doesn't does not work for me, how to not get dragged down rabbit holes of fun to learn, nice to know, but not really getting the results we want type activities and behaviors. So it kind of got rid of any type of FOMO I would have had. I never had fear of missing out of anything in the offline world really. I was just picking and choosing and living my life. Not always for me, but I was living the life that I thought I should be living and leading. And so I still catch myself doing that sometimes, working on the shoulds instead of the, what do I really want to do? What, what am I really creating here? And it's just a matter of pulling myself back in and reminding myself, hmm, only get one life. This is my life to, to create the way I want it to, to show up how I want to in the world. So today we talked about, and I created a couple of pieces of content. One, obviously, is the idiom Hobson's Choice, which I've never heard of. It's been around since the... Uh, late 16th, early 17th century when a livery stable man, an owner, a guy who rented horses, I can't remember, they're called holsters or something, had a policy where you took the next horse in line. You took the horse closest to the door with respect to the stables and the rotation, or you didn't get a horse at all. You either rented the next horse or you didn't get a horse. So although it, it appeared that there was a choice and there were alternatives to choose from, really there wasn't. It's my way or the highway. It's this, you do this or it's that. You do what your boss says every time or you make your boss look good or you get fired. You go along with the company program, policy, procedures, etc. or you lose your job. You pay the ransom or you might not have your, your significant other, your child, whatever anymore. But that was my most extreme example is, hey, Hobson's choice is you do this, you're going to die, right? We've seen movies like that where I can't remember them now, but there's one like with a box. And if you didn't do a box or if you didn't kill somebody or do something, then you, you were going to die and, or your whole family was going to die or something. That's the really dark side of that particular idiom. But really it means we have this illusion of choice in some instances, but we really don't have a choice. I didn't share some of these examples, but I just thought of them. I thought of them and then forgot to share them because that's what happens when you're doing live video. You don't remember to say and do everything you're going to, especially when you can't see and have notes to help you a lot. It makes it easier to forget those things. But I think of utilities. If you live in a municipality that has selected utilities for you, really, you don't have a choice. You either use the provided, in this case, nowadays, internet and garbage disposal service in the municipality you live in, or you don't get garbage pickup, or you don't get the internet, etc. So there's still options though, right? Even though it seems like there's no choice, it's this or that, you can always move. You can always find a dump and take your garbage to the dump. You can always burn your trash. There's always alternatives and choices, but this is just an example of how easy it is for us to be convinced that we need to stay small, play small, because everything outside of us is, it's got to be the way, a certain way, because that benefits other people, not necessarily us. It didn't necessarily benefit the person running the horse to take the next horse in line every time, but it definitely benefited Hobson because he got a regular rotation of all of his horses, no matter how good or bad those horses seem compared to one another, right? And that's true of everything. I also wanted to talk about with Hobson's choice, are we for our and in a positive way, using this strategy for our ideal clients, are we showing them that we really are the best only choice for them, right? The best choice, the best fit for them right now, because those are the people we want to work with. Our topic for Get Your Goals Annual Challenge today, today is day 70 of that challenge, and we are working on mental health, mental well-being for the month of March, and our Part of the SOAP framework today was the O in the SOAP framework. And O stands for options, thus the no options choice with Hobson's choice. But we talked about different techniques to come up with possible alternatives to fill the gap that we created yesterday in the story, the current versus desired story that we're telling ourselves about the area of our mental well-being or health that we want to improve. And then the O, the A, and the P fill that gap and then make 
improvement net automatic. That's the whole purpose of the framework and the process. So today we are going to brainstorm options using the mental rehearsal visualization technique. So that'll be a fun one. And we come up with 10 possible solutions. We circle three because we're going to use those tomorrow. That's it. If I can help you in any way, hit me up and ask. Otherwise, have a fantastic day. It's my last day to be how old I am. So uh, have a good day and I'll be with you tomorrow.